Our topic today is entitled The 200-Year Plot for Global Control The Hidden Significance of the Impending One World Government The following authoritative works are the sources of information for the presentation of this important topic. The first one is called The Shadows of Power the Council on Foreign Relations and the American De Decline by James Perloff. The second is Global Tyranny Step by Step by William F. Jasper. The next En Route to Global Occupation by Gary H. Carr. Next The Global Trap by Peter Martin and Harold Schumann. Next The Descent into Slavery by Des Griffin. Next, The Vatican Billions by Avro Manhattan. Next, The Secret History of the Jesuits by Edmund Paris. Fifty Years in the Church of Rome by Charles Chinnicky. And next, The New World Order. This was first publicly announced in 1991 by George Bush Sr., remember. But the plot began way back in 1776. Millions were surprised that such plans were underway when George Bush made his announcement. But the origin of the One World Government has been going on for a long time and the official claim is that it was founded in 1776 AD by Adam Weishaupt the Professor of Canon Law at Ingolstadt University in Bavaria, Germany. He was a Jewish Jesuit, and that is a terrific combination. And he founded a highly secret society at that particular time called the Illuminati. The philosophy of the Illuminati was Luciferian, meaning after Lucifer. It was based on Eastern Theosophy, made popular, remember, in the 19th century by Madame Blavatsky, that Russian uh, woman scholar. And all correspondence in the secret society was by the use of symbols and pen names. Weishaupt's pen name was Spartacus. And we need to remember that before we're coming back to it. Spartacus. Now, the origin of the word, of the term Illuminati, friends, this comes from Gnosticism, a branch of Greek philosophy which originated in ancient Babylon. And it existed in Spain in the 15th century. Ignatius Loyola, the founder of the Jesuits, was correctly accused before the Inquisition of involvement with the Illuminati. The Jesuit order itself is a form of the Illuminati, but they desire to keep the secret. The brotherhood that Ignatius Loyola established was inspired by the occult and was called the Alambradus. And this is a Spanish term for the Illuminati. So there you have the origin of it and Ignatius Loyola, the founder of the Jesuit order, was a man who was inspired with, by the occult. Loyola created the Illuminati, a satanic organization, to control the minds of European leaders through hypnosis, witchcraft, and mind control. And this is Dr. Alberto Rivera, the ex-Jesuit speaking, who certainly knew what he was talking about. And he says also, Loyola communed with the spirit world for advice in setting up this evil and powerful organization. The spirits were actually demons controlled by Satan, illuminating his mind. And that's from Dr. Alberto Rivera, the ex-Jesuit, in the fourth, page 23, from the Crusaders, number 15, by the Chick Publications. And... Uh, when it was beginning to leak out that Loyola founded the Illuminati, the Jesuits used another faithful member, says uh, uh, Alberto, 
another faithful member by the name of Adam Weishaupt to pretend to leave the Jesuit order and pretend to be originator of the Illuminati on May 1, 1776. And this was done to make the world believe that there is no connection between the Illuminati and the Roman Catholic system. That's also from the force page 25. And the Illuminati under Weishaupt was a dangerous underground political system, or is. Its method was the, is the infiltration of governments to influence their policies. And referring to such leaders targeted for subversion, Weishaupt made this declaration as recorded by John Robertson. It is our duty, he says, to surround them, that's these government leaders, with its members, so that the profane may have no access to them. Thus we are able most powerfully to promote its interests. If any person is more disposed to listen to princes than to the order, he is not fit for it and must rise no higher. We must do our utmost to procure the advancement of Illuminati in all important civil offices. By this plan, we shall direct all mankind. In this manner, and by the simplest means, we shall set all in motion and in flames. The occupations must be so allotted and contrived that we may, in secret, influence all political transactions." Unquote. John Robertson, Proofs of a Conspiracy, printed in 1798, page 74 and 84. And John Robertson was that brilliant Scotsman, remember, who was invited to join the Illuminati, and he, he did, there, but did, did join with them and got all this information and then left it when he realized what it really was. Now, in 1782, there took place the Masonic Congress in Wurmbad, Germany. And representatives of all secret societies convened. This gave a great boost to the Illuminati. They gained control and were accepted as the leaders of the New World Order. Now, in 1786, the Illuminati was banned by the Bavarian government. What happened was that some members, realizing the danger, warned the government. Secret documents were captured and other governments were warned. But it was too late. Over 12 governments were already infiltrated. And the other governments declared that the reports were too outrageous to be true. So there you are. The first attempt to enter America is interesting. Three presidents warned the nation of the Illuminati, Washington, Jefferson, and Lincoln. The Illuminati was involved in the American Civil War of the 1850s. The Illuminati was responsible for the assassination of President Abraham Lincoln. This shows how dangerous it, it is. And uh, the Statue of Liberty, it is claimed, of course, it was a gift from France in 1886, and it's claimed that this is nothing more or less than a, than a, a memorial to the Illuminati. It's claimed the statue represents the goddess of reason, that the ever-burning torch represents the doctrines of Illuminism, and that the official title, Liberty Enlightening the World, applies to the Illuminati. How about that? And uh, in the Great Seal of the USA, here we see the influence of the Illuminati, the Great Seal of America. It contains seven designs of number 13. And what's that signify, my friends? 13 is connected with witchcraft, you see, with which the Illuminati was connected. And uh, the wording on the reverse side of the seal, it, it gives there a 13-tiered pyramid capped by the all-seeing eye of Osiris. And who was Osiris? And the title of it? Novus Ordo Seclorum, which means the Order of the Ages. And there you have it. And as the eye of Osiris? What eye is this? This is Osiris. It was no, none other than Nimrod, the great leader of old Babylon, you see. And... Uh, that's whose eye represents 
the eye of Nimrod, the sun god. This is nothing more than the occult, you see. And uh, the United States one dollar note also reveals the influence of the Illuminati. There on the left side you see the eye of Nimrod and the, the pyramid. And on the right the seal of the United States with its uh, thir the, the, the 13 uh, the, uh, the, uh, forms of th the number 13 denoting witchcraft. And uh, the title, The New World Order. So there you have it. Now, it's interesting to notice that uh, the, uh, because of the B Bavarian ban, that is by the American, uh, the Bavarian government, the Illuminati changed its cloak. Officially, it was defunct, non-existent. Officially, it does not exist as the Illuminati. But under the new name of high or illuminized Freemasonry, it has reappeared stronger than ever. And that's what they did, very clever. And under the title, for instance, of Jac the Jacobin Society, the Illuminati appeared in France in 1789. And what, what did they do in France, my friends? The, the, the name of its grand patriot was Weishaupt, uh, revealing its true identity. And they were responsible for organizing and inspiring that terrible French Revolution, which turned France, remember, upside down. There you have the influence and the power of the Illuminati. In the 1780s, the Illuminati transferred to Frankfurt, Germany, and through Freemasonry, its alleged, it met the Rothschilds with whom it formed an alliance. It's claimed, however, by some that it had been secretly supported by the Rothschilds from its inception. And this could be true. And this leads us to the question, who are the Rothschilds? They were, or are, a Jewish family named Bauer. Mayer A. Bauer, a moneylender in Dutengast, Frankfurt. That's the Jewish quarter of Frankfurt. The firm's motto was Rothschild, or Red Shield. That's what it means, you see. And he had five sons whom he trained in finance. And they were finally set up as bankers in Frankfurt, Vienna, Naples, Paris, and London. And we've heard much, of course, about the Rothschilds ever since. The Rothschilds are the official bankers of the papacy, believe it or not. As F.T. Saucy has declared in his uh, Rulers of Evil, page 161 and 2, he says, Aware that the Rothschilds are an important Jewish family, I looked them up in Encyclopedia Judaica and discovered that they bear the title Guardians of the Vatican Treasury. How about that? And he says, Who would ever search a family of Orthodox Jews for the key to the wealth of the Roman Catholic Church? So there you have, my friends, the secret behind the Rothschild family. And the Illuminati and the Rothschild uh, alliance took place allegedly when they moved to Frankfurt. And this alliance has played a leading role in the establishment of the New World Order. The Rothschilds financed the Illuminati, who opened the gates for expansion of the Rothschilds over all Europe. And as you know, the Rothschilds are the main controllers of the finance of the world today. And this gave a huge impetus to these two tentacles of world government. Now, how did the Illuminati finally infiltrate the USA? And it, of course it has, and it controls it. How did it do it? In the late 1880s, the Rothschilds financed certain United States industrialists, the Morgans, the Rockefellers, the Carnegies, the Harrimans, the Morgans, and a few others. They financed them, you see. 
And the result was the emergence of those huge financial corporations of America. And they certainly are huge. As Gary Carr says in Global Occupation, page 15, he says, much of America's corporate wealth is ultimately traceable to the old money of Europe and the one world interest of Freemasonry. And of course, when we mention the word Freemasonry or High Freemasonry, it means the Illuminati. The, the term Freemasonry applies to the highest orders of the secret society. And it's now indisputable, friends, that this section of Freemasonry is subject to the papacy. Now the Rockefellers, let's have a look at the Rockefellers for a moment. They intermarried with the Carnegies and amassed colossal fortunes. Their founder was John D. Rockefeller of Standard Oil, and they owned four of the world's largest oil companies, plus banks, foundations, and numerous trusts. The American Congress some time back set up an investigative committee to ascertain the true situation of the Rockefeller empire. It reported such colossal wealth and financial control that many congressmen refused to believe it. The Rockefellers control vital areas of American life and their influence, my friends, is global, believe it or not. Uh, Gary Carr, and a few years ago, wrote this book called None G Dare Call It Conspiracy, Gary Allen, rather. And, uh, friends, it is recognized that Gary Allen's book is, is, um, contains the truth concerning the Rockefellers, and it certainly is an eye-opener concerning this family. And there is complete cooperation between American and European financial giants. And this has continued, of course, for many decades. Complete cooperation. It is Illuminati control. Now, in 1903, there was produced the Protocols of Zion. And most people are, are aware of these protocols. And it's, it's an alleged declaration by the Zionists of their plan to control the world's finance and to gain the ascendancy of mankind, the Jews, you see. This is the claim. But, of course, this was a very common practice back in the Middle Ages to invent crimes against the Jews in order to rob them of their possessions, you see. And this is, a, is something similar. The fascists and Nazis used the protocols with deadly effect upon the Jews. The Jews fully rejected these claims, and investigators are convinced that the Jesuits were responsible for the Protocols of Zion. And this is confirmed by Dr. Alberto Rivera, giving us further evidence of Jesuit Illuminati connections. Or, uh, uh, Dr. Rivera, uh, declares and has revealed in the book, in the volume called The Grandfathers, page 10, Augustine Cardinal Bay, the Jesuit leader, he says, informed us, quote, we Jesuits constructed a master plan that would not only annihilate European Jews, but would turn the world against them. We directed certain Jews who were loyal to the Pope to write a document called the Protocols of Zion. How about that? And one of the purposes of the Protocols of Zion is to, is to form a smokescreen in order to hide the activities of the Illuminati. Let us notice again something about the Jesuits. It's a secret order as you know, inspired and controlled by the occult. They are the chief, or have been the chief perpetrators, or were the chief perpetrators of the last papal inquisition. That terrible experience when so many were destroyed because they dissented from the Church of Rome. It was founded by Ignatius Loyola 
and its purpose was to combat and destroy Protestantism, and how successful it has been. Highly trained, they are masters of intrigue, brilliant educators, dangerously deceptive, and the chief instrument of the papacy in maintaining power. And through the centuries, my friends, godly scholars have taught that the papacy is the great antichrist of Bible prophecy. And uh, centuries, this was centuries before the Protestant Reformation. There were many dissenting groups who maintained this view. And when the Protestant Reformation took place, it dealt a devastating blow on Rome because Rome completely fulfilled the Bible predictions of the feared Antichrist. And this was used with powerful effect to convince millions of people that the Mother Church, Church of Rome, was the great Antichrist of Bible prophecy. And the scriptures indicate, the predictions, the prophecies indicate that Antichrist was to rule for 1260 years. And the only power in history that has fulfilled this point is the papacy, which was supreme from 538 AD to 1798 AD in its political power. Now in the 13th chapter of the book of Revelation is foretold the career of the papacy. And there it predicted its rise, its reign, its ruin, and its restoration. It is all there as clear as day. And there it also indicates that it would receive a deadly wound or be slain and would recover. And this, of course, was fulfilled by revolutionary France in 1798, which dealt a deadly blow or wound to the papacy. And this expression is even used in connection with papal history by historians. And the evidence indicates, my friends, that Rome, aware of her decline, plotted for her own restoration. Now, Revelation 13 had foretold Rome's restoration to world power, and notice the prediction. It says, His deadly wound was healed, and all the world wandered after the beast. Revelation 13, verse 3. Now, here's the prediction. All the world is to wander after it or to follow it. It will gain worldwide preeminence, and it's now, that is now fulfilling. And the Illuminati is the papal plot for Rome to regain its lost, for her lost supremacy. That's the purpose of it, my friends. And for over 200 odd years, we have indisputable evidence of Jesuit connection with the Illuminati in bringing about this purpose. And while hundreds of organizations are working for the new world order, the ultimate leader will be the papacy. She is the one that is behind the scenes. Now, in 1913, there took place, or there was formed, the United States Federal Reserve System. This, again, is a part of the Illuminati. The Federal Reserve System, that's a common term today in the news. And this is, was a, a devious device for Illuminati control of American finance, believe it or not. It consists of the Illuminati financial giants, mainly four American and four European banks, plus a few others. The European banks, there you have them, the Rothschilds, Lazar Brothers, Israel Moses, Alt Bank, and the Warburg Bank. That's the European banks, great big banks. The American, Chase Manhattan, Lehman Brothers, Kuhn Loeb, and Goldman Sachs. There you have those, there are the main banks, my friends, in the Illuminati. In 1913, a bill for control of the United States finance was rejected by Congress because it was contrary to the Constitution. The same bill, under a different title, slightly modified, was presented to Congress on December 23 of that year when most of its opposers had departed for Christmas, it was voted through. The Illuminati, ever since, 
through the Federal Reserve System has fully controlled American finance. President Woodrow was the one who signed the bill into law. But after he had done that, he later, shocked at his blunder, he said, I have unwittingly ruined my country. And they find that record in Gary, Gary uh, Gar, Gar's book. And uh, later, uh, or rather, why such a blunder from such an intelligent man? My friend Wilson's cons constant companion and advisor was Colonel Edward House. With his persuasive powers, he influenced Wilson to agree to the setting up of the Federal Reserve. And he was in the pay of the Rothschilds. There you have it. And here from a newspaper, we have the two figures. On the right, President Wilson. On the left, House. Colonel House was front man, it says, for international banking fraternity. He manipulated President Woodrow Wilson like a puppet. Wilson called him my alter ego. House played a major role in creating the Federal Reserve System, passing the graduated income tax and getting America into World War I. House's influence over Wilson is an example that in the world of super politics, the real rulers are not always the ones the public sees. How true. Now we come now to the next great event that was uh, planned by the Illuminati, the 1914-18 World War, the Great War, this terrible war. Was the Illu Illuminati involved? My friends, at that time there were three great empires dominating Europe. The Austrian, Austria, uh, Austrian Hungarian, the Tsar Russian, and the British. All were steeped in tradition, all were resistant to change. World government was impossible with these in place. The outcome of the war two empires disappeared. The third, the British, was deeply in debt. And that's when its decline began. Who gained from the Great War? My friends, the giant Illuminati finance corporations of America. They're the ones that gained. For instance, Bernard Baruch, a man, a name that was famous many years back, and he was the Illuminati leader in the United States. He himself made $200 million dollars out of the war. That shows you, my friends, who was behind it. The 1914-18 war was plotted by the Jesuits. And Edmund Paris, in his Secret History of the Jesuits, documents how the Jesuits engineered World War I and World War II to remove the British Empire, the bulwark of Protestantism. World War I began the decline, and World War II ended the British Empire. We come now to 1917 and the rise of Soviet Communism, founded by the Illuminati, believe it or not. In 1847, Karl Marx joined the Illuminati. He was closely associated with Mazzini, the leader in Italy, remember, who had replaced uh, Garibaldi. In 1834, he was appointed by the Illuminati as director of their revolutionary program. Weishaupt had died in 1830. And Karl Marx, my friends, did not write the Communist Manifesto. According to Dr. Alberto Ribeiro, the ex-Jesuit, in The Godfather's page 10 of the Crusaders, number 14, he says, the loyal Communist Party members would go into shock if they ever found out that their great heroes, Marx and Engels, who wrote the Communist Manifesto in the 1800s, were actually coached and directed by Jesuit priests." Unquote. And Gary Carr in Global Occupation, page 116 says, 
During the early days of the Russian Revolution, the revolutionaries called themselves Spartacists before becoming known as Bolsheviks and then as Communists. So my friends, there are the facts concerning Communism. Spartacus, remember, was the pen name of Adam Weishaupt, indicating that the Illuminati was behind the rise of, of, of Communism. And who was behind Lenin? For remember Lenin, after the revolution started, he was sent from Switzerland to Russia to take charge. He traveled in a sealed train, and this train was loaded with gold bullion to finance the revolution. This bullion was worth 666 million United States dollars. It was allowed to pass through the German enemy lines to Russia. Who provided the bullion? The Federal Reserve in the USA, the Illuminati banks. Was the Vatican involved? Did Rome agree to the Illuminati plan for the establishment of communism? Decidedly. Notice now Avro Manhattan and he has written in his book, The Vatican Billions. The truth of the matter is that she secretly welcomed the Bolshevik Revolution. Yet while her anti-Bolshevik exertions were genuine and effective, her secret activities in welcoming Bolshevism were no less real. To the Vatican, who had, which had waged war against the Orthodox Church since the 11th century, the downfall of her rival was too good to be true. The evil of Bolshevism could in this manner be accepted in view of its having destroyed the Orthodox Church. With one proviso, however, that it would give Rome a free hand to finish the task of eliminating Orthodoxy in Russia once and for all. The deal was accepted. Lenin agreed with the Pope. Grandiose schemes were blueprinted for the taking over of the Orthodox Church lock, stock and barrel, including the claims for her former wealth and lands. These, note, to be put forward at a later stage once Catholicism had taken over the old plan. However, Lenin first and his successors afterwards became aware of the extent of the Vatican's game. He grew difficult and the Kremlin Vatican secret honeymoon was abruptly cut off around 1925. Avro Manhattan, The Vatican Billions, page 124 and 125. All right. The next event in connection with the New World Order, 1917 again. And there took place, or then took place, the first Fatima apparition. This commenced the massive Marian revival that's now sweeping the world and urging the acceptance of the New World Order. So there we have the spiritual forces, you see, aiding and abetting. In the, in the establishment of the New World Order. Again, 1917, full media control commenced, controlled by the Illuminati. The majority of the influential newspapers in the, in the United States were bought, combined, and placed under control. And this control, my friends, is now almost global. The Illuminati control the media throughout most of the world and the purpose to prevent the exposure of the Illuminati and you can find evidence for this in the congressional record of February 9, 1917. Media control today is so effective my friends that even congressional whistleblowers have failed despite their efforts to expose the Illuminati. And this, is, this answers the query that comes from many. Why hasn't this been exposed? 
And the answer is it's almost impossible to expose it. To date, six congressmen have issued warnings and each one has been accidentally killed. The Illuminati, you see. 1920, here took place the formation of the League of Nations. The first political attempt at one world government. Inspired by the Illuminati, financed by the Rockefellers, the United States, remember, refused to support it, and this was the main cause of the failure of the League of Nations. 1921, the formation of the Committee of Foreign Relations, another term that's very pop, very well known today. This was a non-government committee uh, to advise governments on international affairs, but in reality to control them. And there are four separate groups located in Britain, France, Germany and the USA. It's the one in the USA that we hear about mostly. And it was set up by the Illuminati at the Paris Peace Conference led by Baron Edmund Rothschild of France. And it was financed by the Federal Reserve System and still is. Prominent names involved in the Federal Reserve. All presidents, United States President from Roosevelt, except John Kennedy and Lyndon Johnson. Some of the directors were, have been Adlai Stevenson, Cyrus Vance, George Bush Sr., Henry Kissinger, David Rockefeller, and Alan Greenspan, the man who currently is Treasurer of the United States. Um, government, showing you how the Illuminati fully controls American finance. Its objectives? To create a one world system and make the United States an official part of it and obtain the surrender of national sovereignty and national independence and how they, how successful they are in, in accomplishing this. And uh, notice the admission by the Illuminati bankers, James Warburg, before a, an official Senate Foreign Relations Committee meeting, this is what he said to them. He said, we want the world banking monopoly from whatever power ends up in control of global government. Notice that, and notice this. He continued, we shall have world government whether or whether or not you like it by conquest or consent my friends this shows the attitude and it shows the confidence that they have they know that they will succeed and nothing can stop them except divine power all right 1922 here we have the rise of the new age movement this is a form of hinduism based on the occult it's now enveloping the world and powerfully influencing the minds of men and it strongly advocates one world government. So here we have these various forces, my friends, all combining for one purpose. 1929, here we have the revival of the papacy. Remember in 1798 she received that deadly wound when the papal government was abolished. And in the Lateran Treaty signed by Mussolini and the Vatican, there was restored the papal government. The papacy was again recognized as a sovereign state. The Pope was king again. Catholicism's judicial, political and legislative powers were restored. Its court, its coinage, its flag, etc. was once more in vogue. The papal government was restored. A deadly wound was healed, as mentioned in Revelation 13, verse 3. And at that time, my friends, the Vatican, in this agreement, relinquished its claims on the papal states. Remember, that was her peculiar territory in Italy. And at that time, the papal states became a part of the Italian state. And in compensation, in this agreement, the Lateran Treaty, 
the Italian government paid the Vatican $1,750 million lira. That's a vast amount of money, especially for that time. What did the Vatican do with so vast a sum of money? Invested, of course, for money makes money. And here we have, my friends, the sinister cooperation between Wall Street and the Vatican. For notice, the Lateran Treaty took place in February 1929. Not eight months later, October 1929, something happened beginning in Wall Street, New York. What was it? The great financial crash. Share markets crashed. In, there was industrial paralysis, mass unemployment, commercial values at an all-time low. Universal depression was the word that was used. And I remember it. I was 12 years of age when it happened in 1929. And... This, of course, was a glorious opportunity for investment because everything was so low in price. And who was waiting to invest? You know, the Vatican. And the result? The Vatican commenced its climb to be the top multinational of the world. As Manhattan declared, the million she got as compensation were the seeds of the billions she was to collect in the following decades. From now on, she would multiply her millions in the same way as contemporary society and thus become a mnemonic colossus in her own right. The years 1929-1930, therefore, became a milestone in the annals of the Catholic Church. For if the Lateran Treaty closed an era, it also simultaneously opened another. It was the beginning of a period when the wealth of the future would surpass beyond imagination the riches of the past. In the Vatican Billions, page 127, Another revelation, my friends, of Vatican Illuminati cooperation. There it is. And notice the ominous extent of the Vatican wealth in the USA. According to Avram Manhattan, and this was written way back in 1983, he says, at present she's one of the major factors practically within most of the United States corporations, trusts, banks, and industrial giants of America. Notice that? one of the major factors. Because of her successful infiltration and astounding financial power, the Catholic Church therefore is de facto one of the most influential presences in the economic activities of the United States. And as a result of the economic well-being of the Western Hemisphere, page 155 of Vatican Millions, he continues, the Catholic Church in America operates like a giant corporation, not only as a maker or breaker of politicians at all levels, but equally as a financial giant consorting with her peers in the running of the economic life of the country. How about that? The fact remains, he continues, that the Catholic ecclesiastic and economic octopus operates in almost every field and at every level of the American economic structure. In other words, she is in control. Those reliable investigators, says Avro Manhattan, Larson and Lowell, have tentatively given a conservative estimate of the Catholic wealth in the United States. It surely would not be underestimating its true value were we to add another 20,000 million to the 80 billion mentioned above, page, one, page 187. 
This would make the total wealth in 1983 at $100 billion. What wealth? And every Manhattan continues, he says, within a single generation, she has contrived to transform herself into the wealthiest <coughs> giant theocracy of the Western Hemisphere, if not of the whole world. Page 189 again. The Catholic Church, therefore, once all her assets have been put together, is the most formidable stockbroker in the world." Unquote. <clears throat> the Vatican Under Secretary of State, upon surveying the financial situation of his church in the United States, could not refrain from uttering a word seldom heard at the Vatican. Amazing. Indeed, he was heard to use another adjective which has never been used there in living memory. Incredible. And Avro Manhattan says he was right. Here is indisputable evidence, my friends, of the papacy recovering her power. Silently, secretly, she is emerging as the most influential power in our world today. Now, to what extent will she regain her power? And I want you to notice the divine prediction to which we referred to earlier in Revelation 13, which says, His deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast, Revelation 13, 3. So, that's what it tells us, and this is what's coming in the future. And so, my friends, in our second section of this tremendous topic, we will outline further events in the secret drama and show how it will climax. For the Word of God, the great predictions of the book, reveal to us the final outcome of it all. May the Lord help us to appreciate what's happening in our world. It's my sincere prayer.